Hello guys, hope everyone is doing good today. Um, I took an early morning bicycle ride, that's my bicycle there. Um, but I thought I could just make a laid back video for you guys. So um, I talk a lot about privacy and window, sorry, privacy and Linux. So you might assume I really hate Windows, but that's not the truth. In fact, I think Windows is a solid operating system. It's not just for me and folks that think like me. Um, now I could say I've more or less stepped away from Windows. I still have a Windows PC here and there, but then it's just for work and no longer for personal use. And I find this interesting because um, for the last 10 years, I've been seriously integrated neck deep into the Windows ecosystem tweaking, troubleshooting, and writing on top Windows forums and blogs. In fact, back in my university days, it was almost like no other operating system existed. It was Windows or nothing. So I guess the question is, what changed? You see, for me, Windows 7 was the real deal. Honestly, if there was never a Windows 8, that one was an abomination, or a Windows 10 or a Windows 11, I probably would never have discovered Linux. I loved its simplicity, customization options, and the sense of control that it gave. I mean, Windows 7. You know, I could tweak system settings without being second guessed by the operating system. I could install what I wanted without jumping through hoops. And I didn't feel like the operating system was watching me every second. It felt like it was mine and not for Microsoft. But then, with each new OS release, one of those things that gave Microsoft its personality felt like it was being chipped away. But the more the operating system evolved, the more it grew away from what I loved and the more it was no longer my taste. I guess Windows 8 was the first sign that the OS was shifting focus. So it went from empowering users to streamlining to become this broader ecosystem for the less tech savvy audience. And that's not a bad thing, but I think it came at a cost. The interface felt clunky and awkward, as if it was designed for a tablet that I didn't own. But then I held on, hoping it was just a phase. But then when Windows 10 arrived, um, I remember going through the settings on a fresh install, and I realized just how much data the OS was collecting by default. So for instance, I couldn't wrap my head around why it was sending typing and inking data to Microsoft. You know typing and inking like what i was actually typing that's when i paused and thought wait what why is this even a thing and then the more i tried the more it felt like i was digging through a maze just to reclaim my privacy so in windows 10 for instance there were privacy related toggles scattered across more than a dozen separate screens you know under general um, i think there was speech under inking and typing personalization, diagnostics, activity history, and you know, much more than that. Disabling things like personalized ads, location tracking, or diagnostic data collection wasn't just one switch. It was a whole scavenger hunt. Even worse, some settings like um, the required diagnostic data couldn't even be fully disabled unless we are running the enterprise edition. And that did not just sit right with me. Then there was also the Bluetooth where Windows 10 shipped with things like Candy Crush, the Xbox Game Bar, Skype Preview. I didn't like most of these. And then if Windows 10 nudged me, Windows 11 showed me straight out of the door. You see, Windows 11 did not just come with features, it came with opinion on how I use my computer. Here, Bloatware was baked into the computer. So take Copilot, for example. It was marketed as the next big thing, you know, AI-powered, productivity-enhancing, deeply integrated. But you couldn't uninstall it. At least, you know, not in the usual way. You need to dig into PowerShell or the registry. And for someone like me who just wanted a clean setup, it felt kind of pushy. And Copilot was just the beginning. There were widgets, you know, Microsoft Teams and the likes. Most of them enabled by default and not every one of them could be removed. And the real breaker was how everything kept on magically coming back after an update. That part really, really pissed me off. I didn't know how to deal with it. I'm used to struggling to get some things done, but I don't want to make that struggle so often and keep doing it forever. It's an endless loop of anger and annoyance with your computer. So at a point, I stopped updating my computer altogether. 
Yes, I know we don't usually recommend this, but then it was a choice between my sanity or my computer, and I chose myself first. And I guess that's when it really sank in. You know, computers should be tools for creativity, freedom, expression, but that wasn't the case any longer. But still, this was not the final straw. Um, what really broke me was the Windows 11 hardware requirement drama. You know, I, I had a high-performing laptop, barely a year old, solid specs, working perfectly. But guess what? I could not upgrade it to Windows 11. And why? Because it didn't have TPM 2.0 or a CPU that Microsoft, you know, that passes Microsoft's arbitrary supported list. Of course, my PC could easily run the OS. But it didn't meet their compliance checklist, so automatically there was no Windows 11 for me. Now, you see, here's the thing. Obsolence used to be a matter of performance. Now it's a matter of permission as far as Microsoft is concerned. Now, at this point, a few things had become crystal clear to me. Windows isn't built for power users anymore. It's built for policy. Secondly, hardware obsolence isn't just natural. It's now being engineered. And lastly, the whole sense of control we thought we had was just smokes and mirrors. You know, you don't own your PC any longer. You lease it and Microsoft keeps the spare keys. That was it for me. Of course, because I still work in tech, I still keep a Windows handy. I, I, I still have a Windows 7, a Windows 10, and a Windows 11. I keep this handy because every once in a while there's stuff to be done. But now watching Windows 11 evolve on the sidelines has taught me that if I remain in the ecosystem, I probably would have lost my sanity. You see, every week there is a new dramatic change. Stability is out of the window. And it's like you'll have to learn and relearn to use the OS constantly. Now, maybe that's exciting for some folks, especially younger users. But for me, no. It reminds me of how LinkedIn suddenly feels like TikTok with videos everywhere. It's sensory overload when all I want is some simplicity. I guess sometimes new isn't always better and old might be good. And that's why Linux has become my refuge. Anyway, these are just my thoughts. So if you're wondering why I don't make as many Windows videos anymore, well, now you know. Of course, I'll still be producing for Windows, but not as much as I used to initially. Please let me know, at what point did you decide to jump ship? Or probably you never even tried Windows in your lives. Drop your stories in the comments. I would love to hear them. And don't forget to like, share, and if this is your first time on the channel, please subscribe. Till the next one, stay safe out there.